This is Brownies Podcast. Oh, hey, podcasters. Hello, our, our loyal listeners. Uh, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't, please subscribe. How did we get here? It's been a huge year, and I love you three bastards. A lot of shows, 93 shows. Uh, it's been a long journey getting through. Started really back early in the year with the Super Bowl, Brown Dog, when uh, three or four nights in a row, I had to sleep with a man that wore the same clothes. Lilac. Uh, and that, the lilac polo top, he stunk, he snored, I whacked him several times. That man's name was Campbell Brown. And with Jason Bourne Edge, yeah. you got into the goddamn corporate box of Fox Sports America. That is so impressive. It was impressive, absolutely. Without Brown Dog, I finally shook him after three or four days. It was great. And it was on the back of my... Um, mark of the year in 2002 oh, yeah. um, they weren't convinced at the door of yeah. Fox Sports and then we quickly produced that yeah. and, um, and straight away in they come yeah. it's like that, the king returning dog I know you say you weren't but if I was you and I missed the opportunity being the goddamn Fox Sports box I, I would have eaten away at my soul these guys are drinking tequila with the best view of 50 cent and Snoop and all that possible I hate tequila and they were <laughs> up high right because the box was high I was down closer to oh, I didn't the know ground that. yeah I was there mate I was just living my best life. And you said Peyton Manning sucks too. No, I didn't. I yes, you did. You said he sucks as a bloke. Yes, he, yeah. what? Just makes yes, he shit said up. he goes he as a loser. Yes, he, yes, he nice said Peyton Manning is a loser. You, you said that. You can tell he's lying. Yeah, eyes, you did say oh, that. His eyes are I just don't flashing. remember JB ever saying Peyton Manning sucks. That's he said why, he's a loser. He goes, he, loser. He goes to the, they couldn't lose him all night. That's why you said that. Podcast. You said that. Mate, that's another 12 months ban from inclusion into the. Because I think we're coming back next year. So you again. We'll go the whole of 2023 without your ugly mug on the poster. Well done, Brody. Are you happy on with the yourself? Emblem, on the logo. Gone. See, now he's embarrassed. Now he's, now he's trying to take it back. The, for the record, Peyton Manning, a lovely bloke. <laughs> we, had a, we had a drink with him, and I was a little bit embarrassed that when he wanted my number, he gave me his phone to type in his phone, and I was holding a Malibu and pineapple drink. That's right. And, I bought uh, that. Yeah, he did buy me that. Thanks, dog. La- later on. Are we doing our favourite bits right now or is that later on? We'll, we'll do it later, later on. Later okay, on. okay. Um, um, hey, Christmas plans. What are we doing? What are you doing? Very low key. I'm just going to go down to the beach, uh, spend some time with uh, the family, my old man. Um, oh, geez. Then- Mel at Christmas time is my favourite Mel. Oh. Yeah, and then I'll take off to Vegas on the 5th of January. How's me. Mel on Christmas? He's good. He likes um. He likes tradition. Does he, he get dress the- up as Santa Claus? No, nah, no, he doesn't, but he, he, <laughs> he quite often um, falls asleep sort of late in the afternoon after he's uh, filled his belly full of seafood and uh, and ham. Does he get his rig out? Yeah, oh yeah, my Oh yeah, that'd, that'd be a good sew up, There's a little it? bit of quoits. I always challenge him to a game of quoits because now he's got cataracts, his eyes are f***ing can't see. <laughs> so I know I've got a, 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 an advantage on him. You, you rip know? him off. Well, you've got to take your advantages when they come. Do you do Chris Crindle or... Chris Kringle? <laughs> Chris, Chris, Chris Kringle. A lot of head knocks. A lot of head knocks. <laughs> do you do Chris Kringle? <laughs> we up. don't. Nah. Well, I'm gone. Um, I'm gone. Nah, Mel just, uh, Mel just sort of gives me, you know, yep. financial incentives as a, to, to be his son. Oh, that's nice, man. Yeah. It must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> it must be nice, Brody. To get, an, Mate, to get an envelope for Christmas. <laughs> you know, unlike Brody. I, I get Brand a cashier to go to Christmas. That's right. Unlike Brody, Brandog speaking the truth. <laughs> he does. There is a lot of financial inducement from Mel Brown to be his... Uh, back to Queensland for me. Uh, back for a couple of months. It's going to be good. So go back and see my wife, Carly's family. Yes. Get up there. Go to the Magic Millions. Play a bit of golf. My mate, Fatty Vorton. What date is the Magic Millions? Uh, Second week of Feb. Can you do, oh, Jan, sorry. Of Jan. Can you do me a favour? Don't stop growing that beard until then. You like my beard, don't you? Brother, I want to see where this goes. Well, it's Summer John. This is an exciting adventure my that we all... My wife hates it. Who cares? Who cares? Exactly right. I haven't got within a bull's roar of cars for a long, <laughs> oh, long, excellent. long time. Are you going to do some paddle boarding, do some Queenslander yeah, shit? Absolutely. Paddle boarding, surfing, golfing. And I meet up with my mates down at the Crab Pot, which is the bar underneath the Burley Surf Club. And we just, you know, we have a few bets. Brown Dog will send us some shit tips. We'll lose yes. all our money. I'll blow up a Brown Dog. But all in all, it'll be a good trip. Good. What's Fatty Querity? I, I th- Perth. Uh, I've got to Perth for two weeks. Just wh- nothing nothing really to report. Get some sun. Go see some old schoolmates. But the, one the more question. The best part of Carl's family, we, we do Chris Kringle. <laughs> Chris, Chris Kringle. Kringle. <laughs> Chris Kringle. <laughs> the great Chris Kringle comes out. <laughs> Oi, what, what's Fatty Vaughan's house like? Fatty's good. Fatty lives in like a, it's like a three, four level townhouse. Shit. Yeah, he lives there with... Uh, <clears throat> 
He lives there with his wife, Kerry. And, elevator? Uh, Is there an elevator? Uh, yes, there's an uh, elevator. Jeez, Fatty's doing yeah. all right. Yeah, so, no, he's going, uh, things are going okay. Going swimmingly. He, he plays golf five days a week. And his handicap is very good. He's down to about four. He, he's got a shit swing. He looks like he swings off about 20. But he plays off about four, and he's good value. He's How sweet man. that, man? He took Brian Brown out for a round, didn't even know him. Yeah, that, that was great. And then the old man's turned up with old clubs and this old button-up shirt. So straight away, Fatty's rang me up and said, what a disgrace. You've let your old man come out here. You're, not a, you're too tight to even buy him a polo top. <laughs> I could have I could have lent him your lilac polo top <laughs> from the Super Bowl. Dude, that's actually a great nickname, Fatty. Fatty. Great nickname, isn't yeah. it? Bruce. I, well, unlike the rest of you, I... I'm still employed, and so I will be working pretty much the whole way through, which absolutely sucks. But I'll go down and watch my father-in-law play cricket. It's this tiny little Indian man, and he goes out there and bats without a helmet, and it's truly heroic. I'll sit there on the edge, and I'll annihilate about 12 beers as I watch. Really? Yeah. That sounds fun. Shit you made so good. It's so good. You will fail a drug test at that period. No. He's working through Christmas. And the yeah. highlight will be going to watch his father-in-law play cricket. Oh, mate, it's so <laughs> good. <laughs> mate, you are having a shit <laughs> And just double back on just double back on me playing golf with Fatty or to, yeah. also too, because I know you pricks won't cut this out of the podcast. His wife's name's Kim as well, said oh, Kerry. Uh, I was a bit confused. So. <laughs> You're right. We would not have edited that. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, Qatar. So, what, what a little concussion test, though. What a dumpster fire. Yeah, it is. It's it's a shame, isn't it? And um, I, I know that during the course of the year, we were sort of trying to get to Qatar. We, yeah. we had our point speed approaches and, and want to put a package together. And the more I learned about Qatar and the, the atrocities, the humanitarian atrocities that have been going on over there, and the amount of um, immigrants that have been dying, building the stadiums and the horrible work conditions, the lack of food, some of their laws... Um, I'm boycotting it, boys. I'm, I'm not going to go. I've I told them that oh, right. I'm not going to be part of that. And so that's why our junket ended up not going Oh, ahead. is that right? So of your honor. I'm, a, I'm a humanitarian. Mm. David Beckham's copying it, man. I think when he signed on to be like the spokesperson yeah. for that, I, I'm not sure he realised the shitstorm that was going to come. Mate, they pulled him from pillar to post too. Yeah. Uh, the critics, but also the Qataris. They've tamed everything. He's having to go to the opening of an envelope. Oh, man. It's been embarrassing and Grim. it's been put on social media everywhere. So, on reflection, Beck's got a lot of cash. Didn't need to. Posh got a lot of cash yeah. as well. They're flying. Brand Beckham hasn't been a, hasn't been great for Brand Beckham. Also, Brooklyn, their kid, right? He yeah. got married to a, a Snapple uh, heiress. You know the drink Snapple? No, I haven't heard it's of like it. It's like, it's just a juice in America. Everyone drinks it. This, this chick's a billionaire. He's married into that family. So if Bex is that hard up for cash, he's got in-laws that are pretty well off now. When I was um, busking last week uh, on the steps of Parliament House and I was, I was playing my guitar, did that make me a guitar Oh, Move on. What's kill next? me. What's next? <laughs> Put a bullet between my eyes. But does anyone watch the soccer? Yeah, man. No, World Cup, absolutely. I'm just This one leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Also, because FIFA suck balls. This is what they've done with... This, this no, it was a corrupt. It was a corrupt uh, FIFA process. I've been watching that on Netflix, and Sepp Blatter um, was the president at the time. There's no doubt whatsoever the money that was exchanging hands for votes to have it at Qatar, yeah. because I know that America and uh, the, the Aussies, UK, the Aussies Japan, they put together some really, really good packages with good stadiums, the right weather, all the, the hotel, everything you need, and it went to. Qatar on the basis of a shitload of money and and political favours down the track. And you know what? I'm okay with that. <laughs> oh, because it's no. exactly what uh, is going to happen to Victoria if Daniel Andrews wins in a couple hey, of weeks. Hey, so, hey, okay, scumbag. Let's get political. Uh, <laughs> political. Hey, all right. Hey, tell us this doctor story, man. I've got a mate who's a doctor and uh, obviously you see some interesting cases uh, over the journey and quite often you see the, the elderly. Uh, they'll come in, and quite often it's for just a companionship, really, isn't it, or to talk. But uh, an older gentleman came in the other day, made an appointment. Now he's 84 years old, yep. this the older patient. gentleman. The, the patient. patient. He's 84 years old, coming to see my mate, the doctor, and with an interesting problem. Oh, yeah. And he thought that, uh, he said, look, I'm going to have to get a full health checkup. I have to be put on the hoist. Uh, and my friend, the doctor, said, why? Why? What, what's the problem? And the patient said to him that my wife is complaining. My wife thinks there's something wrong with me. 
He said, why is that? He goes, well, she's complaining that I taste differently. <laughs> How old is this guy? 84, 84. His wife's 79 years old. 84. What tastes different? What do you reckon? What? No. <laughs> Mate, absolutely. Fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> Mate, he'll live to his hand. Oh, that's Mate, still going Mate, on. Wait, Wait, hang on, hang on. How old? 84, 84 man. 84. 84. 84 years old. And him and his lovely wife are still... His chopper chops a different flavour. <laughs> that is phenomenal. Isn't that That amazing? is phenomenal. The doc said, get on the pineapples. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Malibu pineapple. How do you keep a straight face when you, if you're your mate? I know, I know. Mean, he said it was one of the most challenging 20-minute consults he's ever had. Give us a look he at obviously, it. So he obviously cleared him and he reassured him that things are okay. Yeah. Did a routine yeah. inspection? Yeah, routine inspection. Check the prostate. But things are <laughs> Gave going, him some commagra. Things, things are going swimmingly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad he... You know, I'm, I'm big on making an appointment as well, which is really important to that story. You made an appointment. Yeah. It's important. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, part of my upbringing was oh, making yeah. a lot of appointments. So Speaking of things going swimmingly, this podcast is actually yeah, doing quite cool. well. It is. Hey, should we tell everyone the news? Yeah. We're about to re-sign for another 12 months. Yes. Well, I, I say about to. Yeah. Because we yeah. had a meeting um, last week and uh, it was all going really well. They were putting forward some ideas for, for next year. By the way, in a flash boardroom that overlooked like the art centre, the whole of the Botanic So Gardens. there's some pretty big wigs there. Like they've all flown out from Sydney yeah. and there's a lot of contract signing and negotiation. They've got a PowerPoint, and, PowerPoint, presentation. A PowerPoint presentation. Here are the numbers. This is what you're doing. Pie chats. Pie Pie chats. chats. Including one of our bosses, Dal, who uh, very kindly gave us a voicemail that Brown Dog had when Brown Dog rang him with his uh, hair problem. Yeah. yeah. We're trying to get this baldness cure. I that goes there. And, and we're sitting there and everything's going great, smack bang in the middle of, of the podcast. And um, a really chat. serious moment too. And I was sitting, so it was Campbell, myself, Dino and Brownie and kind of like a line. And it was a really important moment. I looked around, everyone's kind of, you know, deliberating and got a serious face. And then Campbell's looking down, like yeah. more down than up in like holding eye contact. I was like, geez, I've never seen a man in such deep thought. And I looked and I'm like, what's he doing? Like, he's almost like tucking his head away with one arm and then kind of staring down he's like this. He's making notes, you know, of the PowerPoint presentation. He's writing him in his phone. He was he? watching a f***ing horse race. <laughs> <laughs> I tipped you guys in the elevator on the way up, right? I yeah. tipped you up. We loved it. And I wanted to redemption. up for a sacred oath the day before. So I've made, I wanted redemption for the Christmas party debacle. And I looked down and it was jump time. I thought, f*** this presentation. <laughs> So I the am boss going is to talking the race. To, the boss is talking to Campbell. He's watching yeah. some shot Bro- race in the middle Bro- of nowhere. For the first time ever, yeah. gave me this look of like, he knocked my hand and said, put it away. Like, like you were a school teacher. Yeah. Oh, mate, it was unbelievable. Yeah. 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 Anyway, pie chart was up on the big screen at that stage. I leaned across to JB. I said, the horse won, mate. And we had a little moment and... It continued. The meeting continued. Yeah, Dale, no harm done. Dell, I know you're listening to this, and from the bottom of my heart, I appreciated that presentation and meeting. So and I was I. enthralled. No, you weren't, mate. You were watching a fucking horse no, race. No, I thought it went for too long. <laughs> I thought Shan just dragged it out a little bit too long. <laughs> too many charts for mine. Old Shags. There'll be a. Uh, that's why you know we may be re-signing. <laughs> so know? yeah, I, I concentrated for like an hour and a half. All right, fair enough. And there was 90 seconds that I didn't. But um, but we're going around again. Yes, aren't we? come on. Back in a second. Welcome back to Brownie's Podcast. Uh, Movember are a proud sponsor of this podcast. Absolutely. They've been fantastic supporters of the podcast. And obviously, we are in November, and that is the month of November. And bringing awareness to men's health, both physical and mental, which is such a big issue out in the community now. It certainly affects us boys, um, clearly, by some of my episodes recently. I might have a few uh, a few mental issues, broads. But uh, Movember have been proud supporters. And you know, instead of just going down the standard route of us growing moustachers, we thought, well, what do we do? We go to the most formidable moustache in this country. Mm-hmm. Damn we go, right. We go and see the great Brian Taylor. Mm. And ha- comb ha- his moustache. Comb his moustache in the back of a limousine. Yes. Themed as? Uh, Batman, I believe. We didn't plan that. This no, thing just rocked up. Gothic we, City. We get in and there's a Batman head that looked like he was like a Daft Punk DJ or some yeah. shit. Why it is was it a Batman limo? Just a novelty. That's, hey. all, that's all I could get. It was <laughs> pretty cool, though. And exotic limos are our friends. I think they've, they've got the... Tim. Yeah, big Tim. They've got the Ferrari Thomas. one. They do, which I've used. You guys haven't been on the back of that. But you came up with this weird idea that you wanted to comb it and you wanted to, to play some music. Yeah, well, just... Just have a listen. November, it's big. And to celebrate, we're going to comb Australia's greatest moustache. All good, Brian? What are you going to do? Comb that big 
beautiful thing. You think you can get through it? Yeah, I think so. Cool. Dog music. I'll catch them as they drop out. <laughs> All good, Brian? So far, you haven't got a knot yet. How are the kids? Strange thing to be doing. Why, why are you doing this? I don't know, man. So we did the comb thing. Uh, resounding success. Yeah, it was. Uh, now, we had a little BT chat. Please enjoy this. Uh, Bristle, thank you for letting me inside your moustache. Yeah, what were you doing in there? <laughs> I was enjoying the comfort, boys. Yes, it was. It was like a soft mattress. BT, uh, what did you think about Scott Gallen's top 15 <laughs> commentators? <laughs> when, uh, After 40 years in the game, that was the best question to come up with. But, you know, <laughs> Mate, Scott Gallen's named the top 15. He had you at number seven, but he yeah. had your, your compadre... James Brayshaw at number two. Now, is there a rift simmering at Channel 7 in the top commentary position? Probably. Probably, I would say. Will you be sabotaging today? <laughs> was I seven? You were seven. That's what nearly a, last. No. Well, mate, Christ, so 15. Christ, I'm disappointed now. But You're anyway. about the same as Adam Papalia. <laughs> Bristol, was your McDonald's ad played enough on Grand Final Day? Well, I, I don't know. I wasn't watching, but I hope so. Jesus Christ. Was Four, it? Minimum 40, uh, I saw it. Fill it a fish. <laughs> Is that your choice? Yeah, well, three in, a, in one go. So it's, they're about a bite and a half each. You ever had one, Benny? Fill Never, it a fish? No, nah, no, nah, I'm a vegetarian. You're the only man in Australia that eats fill it a fish. Do you realise that? Yeah, but they're beautiful. What does summer, summer Brian look like? In summer Lawn? Brian looks like... Uh, you know, you could imagine it, you know, the perfect fit. Board shorts, <laughs> yeah. Dick uh, dogs. beach, deck chair, <laughs> oh. just surveying the scene. What is Summer Brian's drink of choice? A uh, drink of choice would be a um, a Bailey's when I get home oh, on the rocks. I, milk in just summer. I, I'm sweating and, I'm, you know, it's 40 <laughs> degrees and I've got home and I'm shitty with the world. A Bailey's on the rocks. PT, uh, every off-season you, you come up with a new line or some new superlatives. Um, last year it was Orazio. The year before that it was Lloyd. Yeah. Who are you going to really focus in on this season? Well, I don't know, Brownie. This season hasn't come yet and I haven't got there. And <laughs> You know, that's not the sort of thing I think about. It just sort of happens. Don't you order. prepare all summer? Don't you sit no, in your bungalow? It's, yeah. it's, it's automatic when you sit next to people like yourselves yeah. and then you say something stupid and it rolls from there. <laughs> hey, Brian, yes, I'd don't. never go up to Paul McCartney and ask him to play Let It Be, but... Can you do wowee for us, man? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, come on! Oh, <laughs> shit! Wowee. You, pay for that. Oh. It's, you spoke over it, man. Can you do it again, bro? Wowee. <laughs> yes! Well, how do you think it went? Yeah. I, it was, Couldn't have gone better. It, it went better than I expected. So, when I reached out to BT a few weeks ago, uh, initially there was apprehension from BT. Yeah. When I explained... What we wanted to do, especially what Dino wanted to do. He yeah. said, that's a bit weird. Yeah, it's yeah. very unique, but he's up for it, BT. And this is not just because he's an ambassador of November, no. a proud supporter. BT obviously just wants to support the cause, help us bring awareness, and obviously loves us boys. He was so across Brownie's podcast that he asked us, in fact, that uh, when do our episodes start playing? Yeah, <laughs> so got it, yeah. The big game for 18 months, Brian. But he's he's a proud ambassador now for Movember as well. Can I, I say this? Yeah. I don't think BT would have let any other people in Australia do what, what just he allowed happens. us to do because of you yeah, know, yours and my relationship. Well, you've him, got so. nude. You've hey. seen each other's landing strips yeah, here we as have. the full Monty's. Who's got a bigger pecker? You or BT? Uh, no, most people have a bigger pecker than sure, I do. Sure. It was very, very cold uh, yeah. on the stage sure. that night. They yeah. they played uh, the air conditioner just on my section just, of the yeah. stage, <laughs> I reckon. Hey, yeah, well, how did it end? Because there was a big... Fireworks. It's fireworks. So the crowd... Couldn't really see it because it was like the, a flash The lights bang. were quite bright. Yeah. Uh, and then there was some fireworks that came up out the front. Yeah. So, so tell it, me, does BT have full hog out? Yeah, we're all new. Full yeah. hog. Yeah, yeah, go back and watch the full money, mate. You did you did you work yourself up pre just to I, get us sort of half a mongrel? I absolutely did. But the thing was, we had a, a um, really, really tight G string on, which it, it just restricts. Any movement, blood, blood flow. flow. So you tried, yes. But by the time you got out there, got set, got fully closed, you know, you're back. You're back to snail. It's pointless like, exercise. Snail, snail. Snail. I ran a plastic comb through Brian's moustache. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, how did it feel? The it texture. Felt, it felt like doing pure cocaine. 
Yeah, right. Did it? I don't know. Do you know what that's like? like? Do, you? <laughs> Do you have a feeling? Yeah, I mean, did you, did you go, go up that? or just down? I just went down. I went down, then took it out, went back to the top of the summit and back down. You got again. very close to him. How, how was... He smelled good. Did he? Big chassis. Cologne or a breath or... I think it's just his natural musk. What yeah. did you do with the comb? Is it a specialty comb? Oh, don't worry about that. Where'd you get it from? Uh, Chemist Warehouse. We should actually give it to a listener. We should, man. If they want it. Uh, There's a thick part of those plastic combs, the thick part and the the finer part. Did you use the finer part? The finer part deliberately so I could really get some traction. Any knots in there? Some resistance. Not a single knot. No dandruff. The man's moustache is perfect. He must wash it. After. He must maintain it. That's that's my life peak. What gets better than that? Mm. Who can well, say they've brushed? When you watch telly, who can say I brushed that man's moustache? That's true. That's Jesus. True. Movember, an amazing cause. Yes. Support it. Get behind it. Thank you very much, BT. Back in a second. Welcome back to Brownie's podcast, the final break for the year. And everyone listening, we, we truly love you. Everyone in the WhatsApp thread, even though these dogs don't engage much. And, and Campbell, you do, actually. You, you're on the thread a bit. Um, we love you guys so much in that thread. And everyone that's listening and give us giving us feedback, please subscribe if you haven't. Tell your mates. Yeah, if tell your mates. Subscribe. Push that button on Spotify or um, iTunes. Because, yeah. Get um, out there. It's... Uh, it's going to be great, and especially now you two, you know, don't have jobs next yeah. year. I'm expecting um, a little bit more content. I'm looking for you know? it. And I'm becoming a dog walker. Are you? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be like Wayne Campbell was all and, those years ago. And you know what? Brownie told me privately, well, and he won't mind me saying this. He said, yes, I'm unemployed, but don't worry. Things are going all right. Did you? I just don't know why you'd say that. Yeah, I just don't that's know why. You made a lot of shit up. Yeah, that, you, know, you did say that. Man, he's made so you much shit up. You did say that. Everything you've said on the Things last few podcasts right. is just, you just made up. Oh, I'd say that. Brownie, look at the pet shops. Oh, I've been on big okay. money since 2001. Shut you up. You did say that. Mate, 2001, I was on 37,000. You said Boy, that. As a premiership you player. S- Thirty-seven thousand dollars. That's overs. Uh, votes in the Norm Smith Medal that year. Thirty-seven thousand. Thank you very much. I mean, that was unders. And then it was about what one point five toward the end, or what? I thought so. Hey man, he stopped talking shit. Because we're both the, unemployed. I can live in your pool house, huh? Of course you can, mate. It's got a bar now. Woo! It's got two fridges: a wine oh. fridge and a beer fridge. Toilet, shower. It's got a toilet. Uh, screens are going in tomorrow, and it's got a bed, a hidden bed, and a smoke shower. alarm. So you'll have to disconnect. That. <laughs> <laughs> Did no, you say a good. pool house? It's pool house. Yeah, no, you're right. You're struggling. No, you yeah. are struggling. You're right. What? What? Why are you going? Why are you going, with our friends? Next will have, have a go. Next will have a go at him when he starts picking his wine from his private vineyard. Hey, he doesn't mate. have a private vineyard. Before we wrap up for the big water world, Dino, yeah. I think we're going to go through. You quick year in review, don't we? Yeah, what was man. Your highlight? I liked um, asking Ken Hinckley if he was on mushrooms, and he, <laughs> he, he jokingly said yes. Not many coaches would go no, along with that. Funny. That was very funny. Also, uh, magnificent, just that word. Well, on that night, uh, Brown, uh, you weren't there, but uh, it was certainly a highlight for me and Broads and Dino, because when Bindog, when Hawthorne won, they defeated Brisbane, and Bindog got up and got nude and sang the Hawthorne theme song whilst the family was over in the corner of the beer garden yeah. just enjoying their meal that night. <laughs> so maybe a little bit more security for next year's listening party, boys. We, we forget that Ricky Nixon pecked you on the lips, man. Yeah, you that was a lot. his course? I did pass his course. My favourite moment was threatening Michael Voss, right? So I threatened Michael Voss, which, again, I never thought would come back to haunt me. Yeah. And then I saw him about oh, three months later and he... I f***ing let him. Oh, mate, and he just stared me straight in the face, refused to shake my hand and said, I remember who you are. I'm like, oh, yes, Michael. Even when your brain is splattered after Vossi's crushed you, he'd just keep pounding it until it was nothing. It would, yeah. And you know what? I'd come rushing over. Yeah. And everyone think, oh, Brownie's coming over to to try and stop this, yeah. and I just piss all over it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's an upgrade Stop to that. the scenario, isn't it? <laughs> uh, talking about coaches, I really enjoyed... Uh, You've lost I, it. I really enjoyed Alistair Clarkson coming on the podcast. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dog. Are you any risk next year of getting Buddy or Clarkson? I reckon we'll get Mitch and Clark on next year. Um, you reckon both, do you? Really? Over the space of, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the space of the year, I, I've got to... I've sort of got to... Um, you know, work the angles, but yeah. it's not often in life, yeah. right, that you you create your own word and it goes viral. Yeah. Every day I walk down the street, 
Someone yells out at it, you know, WTB, baby. You know, we're the best, WTB. And DJ Carly created that's that, That's what man. I did on, on Brownie's podcast. Just, just so, not it true. was big. No, in fairness, it was big. I had a lot of people reach out to Correct. me and say, WTB, yeah. tell the brown dog. Uh, that was good. Now, my highlight of the year, finally, though, was the, uh, the episode the Bucks did. <laughs> 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 it's just a one-off. I, I'm like I'm like Tom Brady with the quarterback. You, you, you never sub out of the game anymore. No. You just got to keep playing because hey. someone will take this seat and do yeah, a better job. Yeah, there was some questions asked from the news court bosses. Oh, no. <laughs> was, there you go. I, I have received yeah. multiple phone calls from the bosses to just <laughs> query. Are we sure about the lineup? <laughs> we might do more of that. They reckon. Is that right? We might do more oh, of that. Fucking yeah. bitch ass. <laughs> Not if I'm around you, won't be. More well, bucks. Okay, you won't coach next year because I like this relaxed bucks. Yeah. Yeah, Bucks is cool. Uh, he, won't, his... he won't go coaching, do anything. No, I can't see him coach for at least another three or four years if he does again. But yeah. uh, he's been he's been a sensation in the media, hasn't he? Time for for the last time in 2022. I'm doing a double. What a world! The first one is really fascinating. Um, there was a factory worker over in Switzerland, and he was a young guy, 25 years of age. He was working in a factory in Saint Gallen. Yeah, he's so specific about know, the location. I know. He's really, he really... goes into great detail about the location of these it's all stories. Yeah. Um, there was super hot aluminium or aluminium, some people. Aluminium? Aluminium. Mm. Uh, aluminium. Let it go. Aluminium. No, nah, yeah. go again. So it's molten aluminium, uh-huh. right? So liquid aluminium. Correct. And he was walking over a huge, massive vat. Shit. Right? And the floor gave in. And this guy landed in the vat 720 degrees Celsius, molten oh, aluminium, up to over his waist. I don't believe. Really, how is he alive, man? I, I would have thought it would have just, your whole legs would have just evaporated. What happened to his testicles? I believe they're still it's intact. It's like a brown dog after the full Monty. Mate, this guy screamed for help. No one was around. He's pulled himself out of the burning hot 720 degrees Celsius aluminium lava, molten lava. Because you know how, how hot it is when you put your foot in a hot bath. When oh. you just ran the bath and you put your foot in for the first time. Oh, yes, it's very similar to a hot bath. <laughs> yeah. This, this well, but you know that feeling no, you get when you put the foot in. Mate, okay. I, I grabbed the cup of tea, not by the handle the other day, and I burnt my fingers and that hurt. And that would have been like 30 degrees Celsius. Yeah, so you got something to say about that, brave. They're war stories, bro. They're, so, they're brave, aren't they? Yeah, anyway. So this guy survived. He's obviously got some severe um, burns to his legs. But other than that, he's going to have a complete full... Uh, health uh, recovery. But are his legs like jacks off Mortal Kombat? No, he, he can still, he'll, he'll be able to run and do everything again. So no one knows how because it defies the physics of temperature. I don't believe um, that. The second one. I don't, I don't believe you'll make a full recovery. It defies the <laughs> physics of temperature. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, right, and I want, to, I want to do this to finish off because we touched on this young lady earlier in the year, mm. the Brazilian Moravini Rocha Morales, the 37-year-old that married the rag doll. Oh, yeah. You remember? There was yeah. a big story. She, she walked down the yeah. aisle. Where are they from, specifically? <laughs> um, so she is from Brazil. And their home address? Um, <laughs> and what province? <laughs> and she, she, she claimed that she wanted to give birth yeah. one day to this, this rag doll. Yeah. Um, in some real drama, uh-huh. right, she has accused the rag doll of cheating on her, right? Well. Which I'm not sure is possible, but we won't go into that. <laughs> We the love of her life yeah. is hanging by a thread, no pun intended, right? She claims that he's been hanging out at a motel room with another woman and she's found texts on his phone. Um, I, 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 I knew she was mentally unstable when she married the fucking rag doll yeah. and walked down the aisle with him yeah. and said her vows, and now I'm 100% sure that she's a fucking oh, dick. You can rubber stamp it now. You can rubber stamp it. I'm going to swing to the rag doll's defence, not just the fact that he's a guy, but the fact he's a rag doll. I'm calling bullshit. <laughs> Well, you know what? Are you 100% sure that bike's going to keep his legs after going to the hot aluminum? <laughs> I'm 100% sure. Fucking this hell. is what a world, and this is the world that we are currently living in. And not only that, Brandy's podcast is thriving. <laughs> we'll see you next year. Tell you, mate. Merry Christmas, Sarah. Yeah. We love you. Thank you so much for Take listening. Take care. Thanks for listening.